afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the Everhart Museum's second Sunday Folk Arts Series. My name is Kimberly Crafton, and I'm the Folk and Traditional Arts Coordinator at the Everhart. And along with the Pennsylvania Council on the Arts, we come to you every second Sunday of the month to meet the artists and the people who are carrying on the traditions of their countries, of their region, of their town, and specifically the art forms that have carried them through very colorful and creative lives, holding the traditions of those who have come behind them and being the bridge to pass those traditions on into the future. Our region covers in the endless mountains, Susquehanna and Wyoming counties, and in the valley cities, Lackawanna and Luzerne County, and finally in the Pocono Mountains, Wayne and Pike counties. This is an enormous geography with many different kinds of towns, industries, um, rural areas, city areas, and the people are the stories that we are after. So today we are here with Mona Panda, and we're so happy to be in your home because your home is your studio, is your heart, is your culture, and we're looking forward to speaking with you about all of that. I'd like you, if you would, to introduce yourself a little bit as far as what are your traditional arts, what are the things that keep you um, continuing to teach, and uh, what are you teaching to the next generations and preserving in your own life? Yeah, I'm a self-taught Indian artist, Indian folk artist, I love to preserve my culture. Uh, that's all I try to do. I try to learn different art forms by talking to people, by you know, by reading it online. Sometimes I even call people up who have those traditional art forms and just show them. I, I learn it from them, then I show them my work and ask them, am I doing any mistake? When I learn the form, then I make it my own way. I always give my own twist to it, right. like my own touch to it. Right, and that's kind of a, a really wonderful, once it really takes years and time to master, and of course, no one will ever say that they've mastered an art yeah, form. Yeah, true. But to get the technique and the the tradition of it, yeah. And then what happens is that the artist has their touch to mark, it. their touch. There's sometimes Indian art, uh, like folk art, is a little strange. There are certain rules and regulations that this can be done and this cannot be done. So right. when you are learning that art form, I do like to talk to those people who have who know those rules. So when I make an art piece, I, don't, I want to make sure I'm not offending their culture because right. India has like different different regions. Right. Once I know I know all the rules, then I go along changing it, but I would never change the original art form. Right. I'll just give my own touch to it. Maybe I'll change the medium, maybe I'll change my style, but the rules of the art always has to stay. Yeah, And that's, and that's, that's what keeps art, the tradition. Yeah. Yep. It's... Um, so this are uh, six different regions, or am I? There are uh, way more. I keep learning and keep going on actually okay. for the artwork because it gets boring to do one art form. I mean, like this one, I just talk about this art form. This is like a Madhubani. Mm -hmm. If you look at this painting, this is how traditional Madhubanis were made. That's like a, literally like a geometrical figure, and you would just see it's all circles and geometry and shapes. And so this is made by like the way the rules are supposed to be. I mean, they obviously in Indian villages they use. Uh, uh, they use plant eyes, they use soil, they use different mud and you know different stones to give colors. Mine is oil on canvas. Mm -hmm. um, it was it uh, oil like you know with oil paint it stays for years. When I put that much effort, I know it'll stay there. And I don't think any I don't any as far as I know I don't I have never seen people making oil on canvas for Madhubani because oil paint is a little uh, harder to use and right. it takes forever to dry. Right. So when I made Madhubani with oil paint, it took me a long time because I had to let one layer dry before I could put the second layer on, but that's how I did that. Mm -hmm. Now I changed my Madhubani, like this this one, if you can see that one over there, Ganesha. Mm -hmm. That's Madhubani art form too, but you know what, the base is all oil paint, then I use acrylic to give more details on it. Mm -hmm. Because I realized with acrylic I can put finer details and it yeah. dries up faster. Yeah. But after first layer is dried up, it's easy. But this was very hard, even the lines are not perfect, it's not easy to give their shape to the oil paint. Right. So I learned the original form, then I put my touch to it because I use oil and uh, acrylic. Originally I was only using oil paint. So that's my change to it. Well, and it's really interesting going from you know the the materials that you describe yeah. that are that are traditionally used have a texture yeah. of their own, and you really are working with that material yeah. that's creating layers of texture. So yeah. you're still working with the layers, but using a new material to create the traditional forms. You're still using that layering technique, 
which is really interesting. I mean, I feel bad when women in India, when they make this art form and they put so much effort to it. I'm mean, generally, it's a group art form, but it, the whole work is gone like a month. And I'm, I, so because, you know, they use those uh, vegetable dyes and yeah. stuff with few rain, few this and that. It's gone. Really? So, so now, where, where would this be put that it would be like, suspect uh, to the Like elements? the uh, walls of the house, outside oh, the house. Okay. Obviously, with the rain and stuff, it's gone. So now yeah. even they have moved on to the tra- acrylic paints or outdoor paints. But I feel like, you know, if you're putting so much effort, you might as well like to keep your work. Wow. So this really would this be really a very, would be, yes. like a painting in yeah. the sand. Yeah, it's just painting in the sand. It'll stay for a week or two. Like each time there's a festival in the house or there's a birth in the family or somebody's getting married. Oh my all God. women will get, you know, women from, you know, grandmothers or grandkids, they all will get involved making a painting. Oh my God. And the event will go on and the painting is gone in a week or two. Then another birth in the family. The whole process goes on again. Yeah. That's actually kind of really beautiful. Yeah, I mean, it is beautiful. I mean, it, I just feel it's too much work. Yeah. Well, to, to have the end, to do it and to have a way to preserve that memory yeah. of that time yes. is really nice rather than to have it. Yeah, you know, but they do it all over the village. You know, when you go to some Indian villages, the whole village is painted. I mean, it's sort of cute. It's very nice to see it. Mm-hmm. But I don't think I have that much time to make it and let it go. <laughs> but I admire that. That's like a great spirit. It's, it's a way to be happy, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's and, an expression. And, it's a, yeah. and a way to con- combine our energies together. Yeah. It's like a Christmas tree. We buy every year, yeah. we put all the ornaments in it, it looks so beautiful, then again it comes out next year. Yeah. For mm-hmm. them it's the same way as uh, this decorative art form. <laughs> so, um, you grew up in India? I did, yeah. Yeah, in what region? And You know, I grew up mainly in Delhi. My dad was a diplomat so we traveled a lot so mm. technically i did grow up in india but we went to different countries right. we stayed in russia we stayed in mongolia we stayed in china so i learned it from my mom each time she moved from place to place she would carry a little culture with her you know mm. like a little painting with yeah. her a little stuff with her so in no matter where we lived we knew how what her culture was yeah so i learned it from my mom so when i got married i moved here when i was 21 then i realized you know what i when my i mean i had my kids i want that culture to go on yeah that's how it started mm. originally i copied my mom she used to do that we followed all the rituals we did everything and it was harder in countries like china or maybe russia because people outside were totally different right in, within the embassy within the house we tried maintaining our culture right and it wasn't easy to find supplies to do she that. She would carry it. She would carry so, a little so suitcase she, from India. So yeah. we'll have a little stuff there. So yeah. we knew what was happening and we preserved that little thing with us. I love it. Yeah, so we did that. So. And to keep the tra- you know, to yeah. keep the traditions going of each of the the you know, the sacred yeah. days, each of the memories yeah. of the year passing on. And then summer break we used to spend with my grandmother and my uh, aunts. They would actually my grandmother would do all the cultures and do all that stuff. So we would sit down and watch her too. So like we said, every month, she will actually, they would paint on the floors. They call it rangoli. That's like a rangoli design over there. Rangoli? So they call it rangoli. It's made with the sand, actually, on the Mm. thing. They would actually make it. My grandmother would have women over for any kind of event. Oh, my God, the whole house floor used to get painted. So I used to watch them do it. But, you know, I do it with the paint. Sand is a lot of work, I feel. Yeah. Yeah, but they did it. Where, where, you know, were you taught where those traditions came from, or was it just something that this is what we do? I just, they, there were some rules, like they say, there's a couple, uh, maybe like centuries old rules, like right. this circle has to be made this way, this has to be made that way. We just followed them, and we asked them why this is just, that's the way it is supposed to be done. Yeah. You know, whatever the reason is, we just went by it. Isn't that an amazing thing? It is amazing. That yeah. as as a species, that we have these things that yeah. that continue on, continue on, and as you said, it was centuries and centuries yeah. of everyone bought into it. Yes, you everybody, know. and you know, it, these are small things to follow. Yeah. You know, it doesn't matter. This, like this Madhubani. I mean, they it's a special kind of design. Like this one is also a traditional one. You, the whole canvas has to be uh, like full. You cannot leave a piece, any kind of canvas empty. Right. There has to be some design on it. And this would have been on this the wall of the house. It would have been done on the wall of the house. Yeah. This is again all oil, actually, the all oil painting. Mm-hmm. It takes a lot of time, but you know what? If that's what the way it is, we just go by that. Yeah. You know, I mean, I think it looks beautiful. We put so much effort into it. Yeah. And like in the beginning, I mean, a lot of my friends would say, my God, so much work. How, how much, why do you do it? I said, that's how they do it. So I just follow this time. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's how it is. Well, and this is um, this is a very special season that we're visiting you in your house, and thank Diwali, you. Diwali, for... yeah. So that's why you see my table, like all traditionally decorated for Diwali. What would um, what are your earliest memories of Diwali? 
Same, you know, doing the rangoli on the thing called buying a lot of flowers, uh, making a lot of sweets. So that's what my grandmother would do. So we had this rangoli going all over the house. Every, like in the entrance of every room, there'll be a rangoli. Main house, courtyard, will have rangoli. There'll be rangolis all over. So floor, walls, outside, we would not do walls. outside of the building? They will not do walls. We'll just do floors all over. Okay. Yeah. Just the, so that yeah, one's specific the floors. to the Yeah, floors. they just sit on the floors only. Okay. And were men and women only involved women, in only, only women. women? Yeah, men just would admire and eat <laughs> culture. So the women were painting and cooking yes, and yes. all of the the decorative and and hospital, obviously hospitable. they had servants. The servants would do the cooking, but women would still do the painting themselves. Like you know, they would want daughters or daughter in laws at the house and the mother in laws to do the painting together. Yeah. That was something kept the families together. So my grandmother would wait, you know, she had to have a daughter or daughter-in-law do the paintings in the house. I don't okay. know, maybe they believed it brought good luck to them. So only household members would do the rangoli in part. Oh, Cooking okay. can be done with other people, but painting had to be done with the family. Because that's the most intimate, yeah, the most sacred. Yeah, and, and then it stayed for a while, you know, the whole family would go away after a week and she would see that thing and she would just tell everybody, you know, this is what my daughter did, this is what my, you know, nice. daughter-in-law did. So maybe keeping memories with them. Yeah. Yeah, a way to stay connected yeah. after the event finishes. Yeah. I um, so so far we've we've already learned about the you know the wall painting yeah. the floor painting. Now that's both from your home region. That's from my home region, but you know what I like. I said I do talk to people and learn around. Like this one art I made in the other room. It's it's like a kolam art. I saw one of my friends. She's a, she's from South India. And she makes like geometrical figures on the floor. And one time she was sending me the pictures. I'm like, what is that? And she said, that's kolam art. Interesting thing about kolam art is it's like made with regular dots. They people measure and they make dots around it. Around the dots, they make lines. That They have to make symmetry around it. And in that part of the country, they believe the lines are never supposed to be open. If the lines are left open, the evil spirits come in the house. Whatever it is, I just found it very interesting and I love the patterns and I made a small part of it, you know, yeah. so that's how you, I talk and I learn. And this is a way that, that you can travel through the, the hearts the, and yeah. culture of the different regions in yeah. your studies. Um, with, with each of the regions and the different yeah. styles, are there also, um, as many cultures have, a dance that is tied in with certain um, art forms? or a certain kind of food that is perform you know done during that time or is it purely decorative but you know done at at festive times strangely i'm like part of north india in north india dances are not performed by the families at all so people who are into like uh, i don't know india is a little strange in our side of the family women are not supposed to dance at all you hire people from outside to dance. People will be getting involved with the painting, but not with the dancing. Right. South India people teach their kids to dance, so it's a little different. Yeah. But that's how it is. Well, it's an enormous country. Yeah, <laughs> so it's an enormous so... country. We have like little, little pockets with different cultures, but there's yeah. so much overlapping. It's easy to understand them. So yeah. when my South Indian friend told me how to make it, it was easy for me to understand because it's basically everything is sort of connected. Right. And so, you have the, you have the basis of the so culture just, with the difference of the ex, um, uh, expressions. The so you just learn a different design. Like for these guys, it have everything has to be full. I I think I'll, I'll get that painting. Yeah. yeah well, let, that. let's let's move on and take a peek at it. Yeah. Like this painting looks like so simple, but if you think of it, they are like uh, you are supposed you are supposed to take a uh, measuring a scale, make all the dots on it, and lines are made around the dots. The lines cannot touch the dots, they have to go around, looping around it. I just made it only with, what, uh, seven dots. The people, women go on and on and on. So seven, seven in each yeah. direction, right. So it goes on and on. And I think it's interesting the patterns they make. It has to have a symmetry. It cannot be like just random circles around yeah. it. And you can choose, as long as you follow the rules, you can do whatever yeah, design you Yeah, you can choose like. any design you want. As long as it maintains the symmetry. And as long as there are circles, they have to be a certain number of, you know, this thing, like there are nine, seven here, then you go five, then three, three then one. one. And if bigger you make, you have to make something like that. And you so just you would have on. to go, you know, 49. Yes, and, yes, know, yes. But, it oh goes like God. that. <laughs> so it's, I think it's fun. I think it's wonderful. Yeah, it was my, I mean, I, I used to see her making it. I'm like, it looks very interesting because she would make it in a backyard. Mm. So I learned it. I said, wow, that's interesting. That's so that's great. how, you know, I feel like it's all connected, but each region has its own rules. Right. You just learn it and follow them. Perfect. Like which five art 
visit on Gujarat part of India. They basically focus on cows and then they make flowers like low water lilies around it. Yeah. The cow is supposed to be like auspicious animal, lucky yeah. animal, brings good luck. Maybe back then, maybe so many years back, maybe it was only source of milk and maybe whatever. So right. people, the whole family would depend on one cow. The nourishment. Yeah. yeah. So the cow was a source of business, yeah. everything. So that's how they do it. This is a pichwai yard. And that's another pichwai yard up there on the wall. How do you spell that? P-I-C-H-W-A-I, pichwai. Okay. Yeah. So this is also like a community or a group art where people actually get together. Mm -hmm. There is always like one master artist who makes it. And everybody in the community will sit down and fit in colors together. So this is good so pichwai good. art. So this is like, a I mean, obviously I made it alone. But generally, people make it in a big group. So it would be very large. It would be very large. Yeah. It's, it's in the houses or temples and stuff. Every evening, like, you know, after maybe before dinner or something, people will get together. The main artist will make the center figure and everybody will paint around it. They will talk it. And in a month, the painting is ready and it goes for display. I love it. If you get a chance to um, visit this studio and you look around, you can just see the love of all of these different regions, cultures, expressions in every corner, in every dimension. There's, um, there's something that I love that your mother brought into you that was, you know, bring everything that means something to you yeah. and, and carry it into your living spaces yeah. so that in your most sacred place where you are your most set, the most yourself, yeah. you now have this representation. And, um, and I'm, I'm looking at this dresser that you've painted so beautifully. And this it, was like a part of my husband's childhood uh, dresser and he always wanted to keep it and it just didn't look good didn't fit in my house it stayed in the storage this long so then i decided to paint it i said you know what now if i paint it it can stay in my living room there you go so i painted this thing in mona's home every surface is a canvas not only the actual canvases on which she captures so many elements of life, but lampshades, door frames, chairs, mirrors, chests are all subject to the beauty that she sees all around her and translates into everyday objects. You said that you really began painting as a child and that was in these communal places is that yeah you know i was a part of a group always admiring my aunts and my grandmothers doing it i didn't know i could do it by myself mm -hmm. because my, my my aunts were really good at it you know they would i mean they would not even use a brush they would use their fingers and draw it really? and their fingers were like really perfect i used to just admire them as a kid it was just something something i admired and looked into yeah. So when we moved in this house, I wanted that tradition to go on. Yeah. So that's when I, then I, then I realized I can do it. I gave it a try. I wasn't sure if I could do it and yeah. I was able to do it. Did, um, did they ever talk to you about how they learned or they just did it? And I mean, did they, did they try to teach you how to do it? I used to ask them, I used to do it with them. They say, you know what, right. hold those, these two fingers she used to do for paint. She used to yeah. dip it in this thing and you just move around like that. And her hands were good. So I used to follow her, but did kill streak. I mean, obviously yeah. it was little, I couldn't do much. But we, that's so how you had to continually dip. Yeah, yeah. You, you dip it and you make a line. Then you dip it and you make a line. So I used to want, they did it like a machine. Her hands were like really perfect. Yeah. So I didn't know all this time when I was watching her and doing with her. Maybe that's yeah. when I was learning it. Uh -huh. But this was out of passion, you know, because they would do it so much. It was really impressive. In like two minutes, it was so complicated and nice. It was done. I, I love our, you know, our child minds as we're watching somebody who's been doing something for an entire lifetime yeah. and we think we will never be able to do yeah. this, you know, and then you find that it's inside of you. Yeah, somewhere. that's what happened to my daughter when I used to, when I taught her one time, I said, do you want to do the painting? She said, no, I cannot do it. I'm impossible. I can't do it. She would get frustrated, throw it and move away. Then I realized she was actually good at it too. Yeah. I think sometimes we just need to have that patience. We really don't know we have it that's till right. we do it. And kids sometimes don't understand, you know, the motor co coordination adults have, they don't have it developed at that point. So right. what they can do without thinking, uh, you know, we can do without thinking, it'll take them a while. Right. So. Well, and it takes us, so I, I, I always think that we should try to hold on to our childhood 
determination. Because I when agree. we were a kid, we will try it if the, like a bicycle. Yeah. You try it and you try it. You fall down, you fall down, you're horrible at it. You yeah. don't care. Yeah. You I just agree. keep going, keep going, keep going, and then suddenly one day you say, I can do it. I wish that as adults we didn't think about failure so much because all we think is, oh, I tried it and I failed, I tried it and I failed, and we stop. Yeah, true. And if we would continue with that child mind, there's amazing things that we could find that we did, and, and that's what, I love that that's what you've done here. I sometimes feel like, you know, to develop the skills, you have to start it when you were little kids, because uh, finger coordination, even though we don't know if we're developing them as a child, actually we are developing them as a child. Right. We might not be good at it, but as the time goes on, we learn the technique. Some of the times, you know, I had adult people who actually came from my workshops, and it was hard for me to teach them because their fingers would just would not move. Right. If I tell them to hold a brush in a certain way, I mean, uh, I saw they were trying to do it, but they were not able to do it. Right. And you know, but when I teach the kids, you know, they might mess up once, they might mess up twice. Third time, they're doing such a good job. Yeah. Their yeah, fingers, they, are, they learn that skill so their fast. Their muscles are still willing to learn. Yeah, and they're not, they have no patience, believe me. But their skills are so good. A lot of them actually do such good work. When did you start teaching? Yeah, that was also like, I did, I actually was painting. Then uh, I did a lot of fundraisers. And I wanted to use art for fundraising. I don't like, I mean, I have done a lot of paintings for auctions too, but I don't think we, you can do much with that. I started, you know, a lot of people love my work. They wanted to come for classes. They wanted to make that thing themselves. So what we did was, first time I did was we did collected money for UNESCO. There was some flood in Nepal and we, I got people over. So I gave them art classes and each time I make that money, I donated all the money. So we, each time I did those fundraisers, I collected maybe a thousand or two thousand. So and I you got, send it to the, I send all the money to, to the UNESCO. I always really? did that. And then we did a lot for Blue Chip Animal Shelter. Yeah. So I hold them because you know what I if people want to learn it from me I wanted the money to go for a good use. Right. So I've done it many times for blue chip also and each time I do it we collect maybe thousand or two and we give it to them. So originally it started as a fundraiser and you. then we started doing we did with the PA Council on the Arts. Right. We did few times and it's always like you know devoting times giving it and it's a free workshop for the kids they enjoy it too. Yeah. So teaching came as a actually as a art fundraiser for for something. Because, you know, the kind of, honestly speaking, kind of effort we put into teaching art is I don't think you're paid enough. Oh, no. And doesn't justify <laughs> my time. If I have to make it, make my own money doing that, it will yeah. make me frustrated. But if I'm donating money, I feel good about it. What a good flip. You know, and, because and, then you don't think yeah. of money. Like, you yeah. know, whatever comes, we're giving yeah. it away. So I, I don't know, I felt good doing it. And that's how the teaching came along, donation part. <laughs> that's actually brilliant. Because it's, it's true, to, you know, there's almost... There are very few instances of an artist being paid. Well, the yeah. value of the, the art years itself, of training, yeah. and you know, it takes a long time to and even, to, even the, to learn. Even yeah. paintings, when people want, they all want my painting. If they want to see it, everybody wants to take it for free. Yeah. So I'm like painting, giving away painting is better. I give you the skill, yeah. which you can make yourself. Then, yeah. so you know, donating skill is better than donating art itself. That's correct. That's absolutely, the, the, yeah. the teach a man to fish. Or... Yeah, and then they can do it. <laughs> and a lot of the time they do it. You know, it's, it's fun to see other people do it too, especially kids. I love working with kids, you know, especially teenagers. They're not messy. They know how to do it. And they're actually quick learners. And they then have a skill that, that enriches yeah. their entire life, yeah. not just one wall in their yeah. home. So I'm looking while we're talking yeah. at um, this beautiful concept of painting the frame around the image that's highlighted in the canvas. You know what, it originally started like Madhubani art form, like we were talking about, I don't know, we have Maya Madhubani painting here in this room or not? Uh, behind you? Yeah, this one. Yeah. The rule of Madhubani art is like I told you, the whole canvas has to be full, but it has to have its own border around it. And if you don't make a border, and it's not a real Madhubani art, people get really upset in India. When you say it's a Madhubani art, and if there is no border, border or some frame around it, then they'll say, you know, it's not my art form, you're insulting it. That's the rule how it's been made. Yeah. So I started with that, then I realized, you know what, it looks sort of nice. It's a lot of Indian art does have a rule that it has to have a border around it. So it's not just the Madhubani? I think even Pichwai, they have to have some kind of thing on it. So it became a habit, unless I'm making a portrait, I always make something, and then you don't need to frame it too. But they, people are very uh, into it. If they make, you make certain Indian art form, it has to have a border, it has to have it. Mm -hmm. No matter what the subject matter, Mona's paintings, Mona's art, always begins with paint. The color, the texture, the materials selected for longevity. 
so that the memories she creates from the traditions she was raised in can last. And it begins with a brush, hours of meticulous work by hand as a meditation, moving across fabric or wood or floor or wall, expanding in idea, in form, following the rules of the art until the spirit of the artist takes over and a new take comes along. When you think about the value of, of Indian art, I don't mean the monetary yeah. value, I mean the intrinsic value, and your teaching, besides the technique themselves, itself, do you, do you change how you're presenting it when you are presenting to a group of people that have a heritage from India? versus teaching to a group of people that have a mixed heritage from all around the world that don't have that common knowledge think, that you have of your heritage. You know what, I have had students who are non-Indians also, anybody who wants to learn an art form would come for it. And right. I have a lot of people who are non-Indians, actually they do very good work. Yeah. Yeah, so we'll be making downtown mural. There is a student here, she came and she was doing such a good work. Her mom keeps texting me, when we do the mural, my daughter will come along. I say, I'm waiting for it. I would love to have her over. It's just a skill. I yeah. don't care where, where they are from. If they want to make that skill, why not? Right. Because I would like to know that art forms too. I don't care. It right. doesn't matter. You know. I mean, I, I'm attached to it, but art is art. Right. Yeah, I didn't know if there was more that you were, that you were able to um, also imbue some more of the cultural meaning because it, they seem so very symbolic. I you know, the, the content seems very symbolic with, as you said, the you know, the different deities, the, the lotus flowers, the elephants, so many of the items that are featured inside the paintings seem heavily symbolic. I think it's more symbolic for me because I was born and brought up, I mean, born and brought up there, but if I see for the next generation, like my kids or other small kids I teach over India, they have no idea, they're just learning it and they're listening to what I'm trying to tell them. So I think that part of the culture stays in India. When we make it here, we're just trying to do something. Okay. So I think the feeling when Indians make it or not Indians make it, it's the same. It's a form of art and they want to make something good looking. Right. And it's so, just that someone yeah. from, who is from the culture of India will have a deeper understanding. And generally um, we don't do religious paintings when we do art workshop. And these are only for my house. Whenever I did, we did outside. We did like this kind of cows and leaves and stuff like that. I mean, I don't want religion to come there when people like non-Indian come there. I want them to just make an Indian art form. So we stick to like elephants. We did one time, we did Rajasthani elephant work. So we do animals and maybe flowers more, no deities. I've right. never done it for workshops. Right, you keep it much, yeah, it much on, more on Just there. only in my house, that's yeah. only in my house. Outside the house, it's always uh, animals and flowers. Yeah, Asian, I think. I'd rather keep it, you know, non-religious and non-stuff, this yeah. thing, because even, I mean, I mean, I am religious, but not that uh, fanatic at all. I just do a little bit of prayers, that's good enough for me. But when it comes to outside, I'd rather, it's yeah. more for show. It's not yeah. like for religious. Like if you see Ganesha, here it's just an art forum. It's not like some, I mean, it's sacred in my heart, but I don't, like yeah. I have parties here, people will put a fine glass here, I'm okay with that. It's right. not like, you know, it's not a temple, it's a house. Right, right. So, and it's, when, when it's everything as outside, it's actually a house. You're free to keep a mug, you're free to eat whatever you want, it's okay. Right. So I don't follow those rules and regulations. Right. I'm okay with that. Um, you said that there was a place in your home that, that you started and decided, you know, this is where I want to see if I have this yeah, inside you. of me. Would you show yeah, me? Yeah, I'll show you that. Yeah. This is the first mural I made. That's where I started my art from. That's like almost maybe eight or nine years back. At that point, I didn't even know which paint to buy. So I went to Lowe's and I picked up all <laughs> wall paint. I didn't even buy acrylic paint because I wasn't sure acrylic would stay on the wall. Yeah, I that I learned you. eventually. So I went to Lowe's and they made different wall paints for me, different containers. That's how I made that one. <laughs> when I look around, I think, oh my goodness, where, where would I even begin to learn how to do this? So how, where's the point that you kick them off? Into their I just journey? take the easiest painting of all because I've seen my little kids and even adults when they see a big painting they get overwhelmed and they don't yeah. want to start it again. Yeah. I mean I think I might have some workshop paintings. Yeah. So I have like those little paintings. 
So when we go for the workshops, I tell these kids, you know, let's forget about everything else. We'll just, first time I'll just make one fish. Yeah. I say, we'll start from there. And when they look at one object, they think, you know what, it's not that bad. It's not hard. Yeah, like this one, one fish. I say, rest for the design you do around it if you feel like it. So a lot of the kids will make it. Others will say, I don't want to do anything around it. I say, let's keep it that way then. So we make it simple as possible. We did this elephant with the kids one time. And I know a lot of the kids like to paint, but they cannot uh, draw around it. Yeah. So some of the times I'll make a stencil for them with a cardboard. Right, just to get, so the, just get, get, get them, them started. started. Yeah. yeah. So first they would use a stencil. So then they would say, I don't want to use this thing. How do you make it? I said, stencil is made out of my painting. Yeah. So I simplify it. And from there, a lot of kids actually get very advanced. And some just want to stay that way. Yeah. So it's just an expression, right? Whatever makes them happy. I love it. So for me, art is more than a talent is to do something creative. And not everybody has to do it the same level. Right. Yeah. But so, we all need somewhere to step in. Yeah. And you know, sometimes, and you people know. People enter at different levels, but that, that yeah. process that you talked about allows people to enter at whatever level they wish to. Yeah. So we start with one thing and we st I generally get them always a cardboard cutout for them to start. Some will just not use it, some will right. use it, and some will just erase it and do something on top of it afterwards. Yeah. Yeah. But I just try to make sure they don't get overwhelmed with it. That's it. Like okay. Indian art does overwhelm people because too much work on it. And it's a like, lot. It's... They're like, we don't want to do it. I say, you don't have to do it. Just do whatever you want to do. Yeah. When you start a painting, do you know what you're going to do? Or does it begin to unfold as you're moving across the canvas? It begins to unfold as I move along the canvas yeah. because like some traditional paintings when I make them I know what I'm doing because I'm just going to follow all the rules but when I make something different I just make the center thing and it just changes sometimes the colors change sometimes the things change you know it's a long process it goes along with it um, are there regions that you have not studied their form yet that you're excited to to you know begin a I, new zone India has so much, so much art, so much culture. If I see something, I like it, I go along with it. But there's nothing I want to do it. Right. If I see something like a friend of mine having some traditional painting, then I go to the bottom got of it. it. You know, I just it. can I get you? Can I talk to your grandmother? Can I do this? So then I get behind can it. Can I talk to your grandmother? Yeah. I mean, because generally, the, when they're traditional art yeah. form, their moms or grandmoms yeah, you have they're to the go ones who. The yeah. yeah, you have to. So it's not that you have like here's the country and I'm, I've done that region I've done that region it's no. something that calls to you and you want yeah because um, for me art is not a profession it's more like a joy right so whatever I, just fascinates me I'll go for yeah. it oh, but okay. I would do for other countries too if I'm exposed to yeah like those eggs they make that's something my next yeah. minute is I want to make those Ukrainian eggs that's awesome. yeah I would mm -hmm. love to do that so anything which fascinates me I go for it there you go that's beautiful. And when you start a tradition, you were talking about starting a traditional painting and you know that from this region there are these rules to follow. Um, does something inside you tell you when to break outside of a rule or do you have an argument with yourself? I mean, when it's you... just something inside of me, but I will always put a disclaimer whenever I post that painting picture yeah. that you know what, this is this is what it is, my input, my intake towards it. Because yeah. a lot of the times these folk things make people from that region very angry. Like, how dare you destroy your art form? How, how, you know, yeah. Why did you take that why liberty did you do that? to yeah. change it? So I always put an excuse with it whenever I post a picture so that I don't hurt people's feelings. Because you don't know when you're hurting people. Okay. And especially Indian art, I don't know. Right. People are very rigid. Religious people sometimes are. So that's what I try doing. Yeah, and, or to say that this is a representation of their region. Yeah, when it's they my. Feel it's it's not 100%. Yeah. yeah, understood. I think in any culture or country rather, mm -hmm. and especially larger yeah. countries like India yeah. and um, lesser to the United States, but we never really learn about all the regions. You yeah, know, we're always um, strangers in our own land. Yes, needing to continue to learn. Especially India, where their languages and culture differ so much from. Within 10 minutes, 10 miles, there will be different the culture, totally. Yeah. Right. So we have to make the disclaimer, you know. Yeah. We've just enjoyed so, so much being able to come here and, oh, and speak with you and be surrounded by all of these representations, not only of your passions, but of the traditions that have been handed down across so many generations. Thank you. Um, I love that you've taken it and continue to honor the, the rules and regulations, as you said, but that you also keep putting your beautiful spin on and helping other people find a way to, to enter into it for their own enjoyment in yeah, their lives. Um, so thank you so oh, much. Thank you for giving me this chance. Thank you.
we thank all of you for joining us today. We've been in the home of Mona Panda, a beautiful artist, art collector, and teacher. And we hope that you'll join us again for another interview with another wonderful artist next Sunday on the second Sunday's Folk Art Series. My name is Kimberly Crafton on behalf of the Everhart Museum and the Pennsylvania Council on the Arts. Thank you, and we'll see you on the next second Sunday.